Christian faith, Islamic faith. In a bid to get her job back, Cherie Stanley <laughs> filed a discrimination complaint with the EEOC on Tuesday for the revocation of a reasonable religious accommodation. She wants to do her job without serving alcohol in accordance with her Islamic faith. Just as she was doing before her suspension, Haluya said. Lena Masri, an attorney with the Michigan chapter of the Council on Anti-American Islamic Relations. This, the flight attendant started working for Express Jet three years ago. Two years ago, she discovered Allah. This year, she learned her faith prohibits her from not only consuming alcohol, but serving it. Oh, really? So why don't you just quit? Take a job where they don't serve alcohol. Because that's not the intent here. Now, why doesn't the judge, as in the Kentucky case, intervene and say, serve alcohol or go to jail? Just intervene. Judge can intervene and say, look, you took a job, you converted to Islam, fine, now take a job where you don't have to serve alcohol. Because if you won't comply, we're not going to let your lawsuit go, go through. We're going to charge you and your lawyer and everyone else with contempt of court and charge you legal fees. Quit. We're not going to twist the whole country around for you. How come they don't do that? The judge. And they can't find a judge to do that to her? How come it's only in one direction? A woman refuses to grant licenses to homosexuals to marry. That was such an important part of the, of the whole reason to become gay. They just couldn't wait to uh, tie the knot and cut the cake. That was the whole reason. It's the whole reason to become gay. Cut the, cut the, tie the knot and cut the cake. Couldn't wait. Well, now they can all rush to Kentucky, of all places. How many gays are there that want to get married? They get married everywhere else. They had to go to Kentucky to find a, a poor woman to pick on, to persecute. Of course, that's it. They shop it. They shop it. They go to the most conservative place and try to destroy Christians. That's the name of the game. That's how I see it. My, one man's opinion. I, look, I see the social upheaval that's going on, and that's my job is to report it, comment on it. It's just one man's opinion. I know what's going on. We're, the country's in chaos. The world is in chaos. You've got to be a darn fool not to see what's going on which apparently is what the, the government consists of, idiots. Okay, now let's move on. Anyone have any questions for me? Questions, comments about my comments? Questions, newspapers, I haven't done newspapers yet, I did only one story. So, okay, I gave a contest before about the poet, A.E. Hausman, and I, my favorite poem was uh, To an Athlete Dying Young. Beautiful poem. I loved it. I loved it when I was 18. It was very touching. But one of his favorite themes, uh, Hausman, I'm just off the track for a minute, was soldiers. One of his favorite themes was soldiers. And um, a critic wrote that the uniform tended to cure isolation and unpopularity, and soldiers characteristically bask in mutual affection. Robert Pearsall wrote that. I thought that was very interesting. The uniform tended to cure isolation and unpopularity, and soldiers characteristically bask in mutual affection. That's true. That's very true. It's very true about police, too, at least where the police are, you know, sort of mutually affectionate, rather than today where they're putting in, like, uh, the, the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey uh, show in police departments to make sure there is no mutual affection. It's like Ringling Brothers, it's like the back room they bring into the police departments now. Uh, those are some of the topics. Let's see what else is in the news that I have not yet gotten to. Let's go to Drudge, okay. Biden, again, I'm sick of looking at him. He's not going to run. It's a feign. Still up there from the morning? Murdoch says Biden to win nomination. Be hard to beat. Murdoch is senile, in my opinion. He's on the road out. What was Murdoch? You know, people are brilliant at one point in their life, then they lose it. I remember when I was a grad student at UC Berkeley, getting my Ph.D., in epidemiology, human nutrition. You don't like it, it's too bad. It's your loss, not mine. My professor was a brilliant doctor, told me, we we're talking about, he was a dean of the School of Public Health, brilliant man, wonderful person. We were chatting over Chinese food one day and he said to me, one of the first things that an elderly person loses is their judgment. And you know, it turns out to be true. I saw that in, you know, family, as they got older, they lost their judgment. It's a very important point. Now, Murdoch is exhibiting these signs of loss of judgment. Why would he say Biden to win the nomination? Be hard to beat. Biden's unelectable. He's a laughing stock, an empty suit. But compared to Hillary, I guess he's uh, Oliver Cromwell. I can, see, I can see his point, actually, now that I think about it. 
compared to the liar or the emails and the, and the, and the Middle East, what she did. He is like Oliver Cromwell. Yeah, yeah, I see the genius in it. All right, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, I was reading about the revival of the Europeans going back centuries, 12th, 13th century. Ideas. People thought, they wrote. Then a man came along named Roger Bacon. He pro he's probably not taught anymore, one of the great minds of his time. And he was so angry at the ignorance of the people. He hated the ignorance of his times. And uh, he said that the study of Aristotle's writings, bad translations, can only lead to a loss of time, produce error, and increase ignorance. Well, that goes for most of what you get out of the media. But his main point that he was shouting to mankind is very much like what I do on radio. He screamed to mankind way back then, cease to be ruled by dogmas and authorities. Look at the world. And there were four chief sources of ignorance, which he denounced. Respect for authority. Does that make sense to you? Custom. Does that make sense to you? The sense of the ignorant crowd, how do you like that one? And the vain, proud, unteachableness of our dispositions, meaning our, our, our stubbornness. He said if men could overcome these, a world of power would open to them. Look at that. Respect for authority, custom, the sense of the ignorant crowd, and etc. Very much like what I do in talk radio. And now I see the so-called leaders flooding America and Europe with people who will never assimilate. There's a reason for it. It's odious. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. You know, break this song. I never want to hear it again. No wonder I don't play 80s songs. Let's start with something a little with a little life to it. Play one that I like already, like ZZ Top, Huey Lewis, Billy Joel. Eurythmics I like. This I don't understand. This sounded like it was on the wrong speed or glue or something. They call it classics now, 80s. A horrible decade. Horrible. Terrible time in America. This is worse, though. Never before have I seen treason being committed in front of my eyes as I do now. Never. Muslims arriving on the shore of Europe, on the shores of Europe, praying to Allah. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Allah be praised. They made it to the promised land. The hands up crying on the beaches of Italy. Next scene, three months later, they're burning towns down, screaming for more and more handouts and more rights. What is going on? How do the people not rise up and, and foment the revolution? You've got drug addicts and criminals running every country in Europe. Because there's money in this. You don't understand it. It has nothing to do with humanitarianism. Organized crime is involved in the smuggling, caring for them, uh, immigrant housing, immigrant this, refugee this, refugee that. There is more money in the refugee crisis than there is in smuggling drugs. And you see, there's money involved in this. So that's what we're talking about. There's a wrecking a whole society. It's an invasion. It's an hallucination. It's a liberal hallucination. It's a mark of hallucinations, self-conceit, to pretend that these refugees will ever assimilate, number one, or be of any positive value to the societies that are taking them in. And I stand by those words. I've seen what has happened before. I see it with my own eyes now. The promoters of multiculturalism are totally out of their bunkers. They're on drugs. 
Now let's move on. And this is only September, early September. The bouncer is on the way. The bouncer's on the way from the Vatican. I can't wait for those few days. I got to build up for that. There must be a reason that God wants all this to be going on. I, you know, I told you that I'm a very, I'm a man of faith. Not particularly religious, told you that. Personally, why, where I'm coming from. But I, I don't know, I believe God's hand is involved in this. He must want this for a reason, the destruction of the West. There must be something here. And what it is, I don't know. No idea why. All these centuries of building up a civilization to have it thrown over through a mass, a mass hysteria and a mass suicide? God must want this for a reason. Maybe he's punishing the West. I mean, you could look at it that way. You get into the whole thing, you know, because they don't deserve the... Con I don't know. Homeopathy con homeopathy conference ends in chaos after delegates take hallucinogenic drug. <laughs> an alternative medicine conference has ended in chaos in Germany after dozens of delegates took an LSD-like drug and started suffering from hallucinations. Described the 29 men and women staggering around, rolling in a meadow, talking gibberish, and suffering severe cramps. Sounds like a DNC, a summer outing. Sounds like what Debbie Wasserman Schultz would uh, direct. The, the whole Democrat Party looks like that, staggering around, rolling in a meadow, talking gibberish and suffering severe cramps. Then blaming it on LSD, I'm not so sure. Evgeny Lebedev of Russia says, an alliance of Western leaders, Muslim nations, and Vladimir Putin is the only way to defeat ISIS. Amen. Lebedev is a thousand percent right. You have Muslim nations trying to stop ISIS. They're called Jordan and Egypt. And guess who's not helping them? You're Muslim in the White House. Because he's not the kind of Muslim they are. He's anti them. He's on the side of the, uh, let us say, the ISIS sympathizers. Otherwise, he would have stopped them already with the U.S. military. Right? Lebedev says an alliance of Western leaders. Who are the Western leaders? Who? who? Name a Western leader who's a leader. Muslim nations, I can name two that would join. Uh, I said Egypt and Jordan. And Putin is the only way to defeat ISIS, which is exactly why America wants to defeat Putin. Exactly why Obama and Kerry have targeted Putin, because they know this. Here you have these throwbacks, executing people, setting them on, on fire while they're alive, destroying Palmyra, destroying churches, enslaving young girls. All of Hollywood cheers on. All of Hollywood just parties on. Not one word. All we hear about is the horror of the horror of the West. Biggest humanitarian catastrophe in Europe since World War II. What caused it? Hillary Clinton, Arab Spring. She tried to overthrow the dictatorship without thinking through what would happen, or did she think through what would happen? The fact is that a militant, radical, throwback, mutated form of Islam is the greatest threat to humanity the world has faced in the 21st century. It's found in Central Africa, Eastern Asia, Lahore, Dewsbury and Yorkshire, regions of America, but most of it's coming out of the Middle East, mainly the lawless terrain between what is left of Syria and Iraq. And the majority of terrorists are Syrian. And take a guess who's coming to a neighborhood near you under the guise of being a, uh, an asylee. Syrians. They're going to rape, they're going to slaughter, they're going to bomb to victory at all costs. They are remorseless vermin. They are remorseless vermin. They have destroyed Syria's ancient civilization. And yet, not one word is being said about them. And the West sits on its hands, and by sitting on its hands, it enables them. Why is there no military invention in Syria? Why is Barack Obama refusing to confront ISIS? And you know, the bigger question is not Barack Obama, but why does he get away, how does he get away with it? How, how are there no questions about him? After all of this of what ISIS is doing, in front of our eyes, how is it that Eric Schmidt, great intellectual giant of the New York Times, or Bill Maher, the big mouth from Sunset Boulevard, Bill Maher, or Colbert, another genius, or that other one from Kew Gardens, whose name I forget, who just could quit. 
How come they don't say anything about this, all these brave men? Instead, they attack 